Hey, what's up everyone? New video, different hat. So today we're gonna play a bit with the create a sharing link action in the SharePoint connector in Power Automate Desktop. So our scenario is going to be, we're gonna upload a document in SharePoint Online. So we're gonna see what are the steps required for this. Then we're gonna create our sharing link. And finally, we are going to send this link via Outlook. And we're gonna see two different ways to do it with accessing uh, nested properties and also if we use HTML or not in our email body. So let's do it. All right, okay, so let's get started. Um, something we're gonna do first, which is completely optional, but that can help seeing the process that we need to go through. So I'm gonna look for comment and I'm gonna put my steps in here. The first step would be to upload um, a document to SharePoint. Then we need to uh, create a sharing link. And finally, we need to send a link via email. And I'm going to put Outlook client because that's really important. And click on save. Now, the first thing we need to do when we try to upload a document into SharePoint is we need to convert that file. We cannot just uh, grab the file and upload it into SharePoint. But before we actually do this, we are trying to be as dynamic as possible. So we are going to set a variable that would contain our document. And I'm gonna call that variable uh, file to upload. And I'm gonna go and grab my file. Now I'm gonna paste the path. And once you paste the path, you need to remove the double quote. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, like I said, we need to convert. So let's look for convert, and we should have convert file to binary data, which is just there. So let's drag it onto the canvas. And we're gonna look for our file path. Click on the X for the variables. File to upload, click on select. And the variable output would be binary data. Now we need to upload our file to SharePoint. So let's have a look at the SharePoint actions. So SharePoint at the bottom, and then you might think that we may have something that looks like upload, but we actually don't. And if we look for create, we have create file. And if you hover over it, we can see it says uploads a file. So that's the one we need gonna grab it. And now we need a few parameters. So we have the site address, the folder path, file name, and file content. So let me open SharePoint, and I'm gonna grab the site. And by the way, you can see that here in documents where we're gonna upload our document, I have nothing. And emails, I have nothing either, okay? So I've grabbed the path, I'm just gonna paste it in here. And then we have folder path. Now, folder path might be a little bit confusing because this is not folder as we know it. A folder in SharePoint um, can also be a library. And so that's exactly what it wants in here. And we said we're gonna upload that into the uh, documents library, which the internal name basically would be shared document. So I can just type it if you want, or what I can do is just click on the select file or folder. And because I have my site path in here, it knows the libraries that I have. And here I have my shared documents, which is what I typed before. Then we have the file name. So this is basically not the path, but just the, the file name itself. That was um, my file name. Again, do not put any quotes, double quotes or single quotes. This is not necessary. And then we have the file content. The file content would be in our 
variable binary data. Select it and then we click on save. And now we're on to the next step, which is create a sharing link. So we have this new action under the SharePoint preview. And if I just drag it in here, it's going to ask me again for some similar parameters. And also, um, if that's the first time that you're actually using the SharePoint actions, you will need to create um, a connection reference. And as you can see here, I already have my connection reference that is created. If you haven't done that before, it will ask you, that's a one-off task, and it will not ask you again. Now, for the parameters that we have in here, again, we have the site address, so we know that. The library name, we know that as well. And then it's asking us for the item ID, which at this stage, we actually don't know because the file is not uploaded. And we're going to scroll down. We have the link type. The link type is going to be uh, some permissions, so view and edit or view only. And then we have the link scope, which is going to be people in your organization or anyone with the link. So before we actually start doing this, um, we are missing the item ID. So let's cancel that. And at this point, we're going to run the flow and see if the item ID is in any of those variables. So click on run. And now if we look at the flow variable and their output, we can see straight away that we have the missing piece in here. So the file response in here would give us the item ID. Great, so let's click on close. Let's grab the create sharing link again. And now we should have all the information we need to fill those parameters. But before we do that, let's just delete this. So as you can see, the file was uploaded properly. Delete, and then go back to Power Automate Desktop. So the site address, again, the library name. This is documents. The item ID, let's keep that for the end. Then we have the link type. We are going to choose just view only. It doesn't really matter. Uh, people in your organization. And then under advanced, we can also decide of a link expiration and a timeout. So where is this item ID? We've seen this is the output, one of the output of this variable. So let's grab the create file response variable. And underneath we have the item ID. Let's click on this one and click on select. In case you don't know how to access uh, properties from the output of a variable, you can have it this way. So you can see it's the variable name dot and then the property name. So we can have it like that. And there's also another way to do it, which would be you remove the dot, square brackets, and then single quotes, and close the square bracket. So that would work as well. Now we have everything filled properly, and the variable output would be create sharing link response. Click on save. And at this point, we should be good to go to create our email. So we're going to start by opening Outlook. This is going to create an Outlook instance. And then we're going to send our email. So send email through Outlook client. The Outlook instance is the one we've just created. The account would be the account sending the email. And so the message will be coming from this account. Now we enter the recipient. We're not going to use the CC and BCC. And for the subject, we can put new file sent via Power Automate Desktop. And then for the body, as you can see below there, we can format our email with HTML. So actually we're going to see 
both results because if you format with HTML, it's going to make your email a little bit prettier. Let's write something short. And then we need to grab the link. So where is actually that link? Let me save that for a second and show you exactly what we are after. So when we create the sharing link in here, we are going to have a response and that response will have some properties. So what we can do at this point, because we're not sure, we can just run the flow. And once we get the output of this variable, then we can construct our email a little bit better. So let's run that now. And we're gonna go into the site, just refresh the page. Our file has been uploaded. Let's go into the email. And as quick news, we have the email. And obviously we have nothing in here because we didn't put the link to the file. But what we are interested in is the output of the create sharing link response. So those are the properties and the values that we have. You can see that we have an ID, we have a link in here, and also we have the more that we can click on. So if we click in here, we have even more properties that we are interested in. And this one, the web URL is actually the one we're interested in. Remember that it's gonna be under that variable, then the link property, and then the web URL would be again, a nested property. So let's go back, double click on our email. And this time we're gonna insert our link. Click on the X for the variable. We're gonna have our create share linking link response. Then we have the link and then we have the web URL. Select it and this should be the link itself. So let's just finish that off. Thanks. And is the body HTML? Not yet. We're gonna see that response first and we don't have any attachment. So let's click on save. And I've already um, deleted the email and the document, so we can run that safely now. So let's have a look. So our file has been uploaded. And for the email, this is what we have. Please see below for the link to the file. And we have our long URL. And if we click on it, then it's opening the document. Great. So if that's enough for you and the link is okay, that's fine. Everything is working. But what we're going to do now is we are going to format the body of the email with HTML so we can display something different than this long URL. So let's delete that. And let's go back to the email. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to paste what I had already. Basically, we just use HTML tags in here. So the paragraph, the break line, and then this is how we're going to construct our URL. So we have the exact same thing as before. This is the formula for the link. And again, like I showed you earlier, this is a different syntax, which is basically grabbing the variable and then the nested properties. So if you want to access a nested property, that's the way you would write it. So the first property and then the nested property between square brackets and single quotes. And the href with the anchor would be for making that text a link. And the other variable that we are using in here is to display the name of the file. So the name of the file is contained within the create file response variable. And again, we have this property, which is called display name. So because we are using HTML, we need to toggle this on to make sure that Power Automate Desktop knows that yes, my body in here contains HTML. Let's click on save. And again, 
let's run the flow. And let's check it out. Refresh. Document is uploaded. Email. And this is what we get. And this time you can see that the link is the name of the document. And again, if we click on it, we have the same document. So I hope this video was useful to you and I will see you next time.